All right, guys. So today we're going to work with equivalent fractions. Equivalent fractions have different numerators and different denominators, but they name the same amount. They take up the same amount of space. They are the same size, okay? So keep that in mind. We're going to work with equivalent fractions today, and I'll put this up right here. Okay. Guys, you have a double hexagon in front of you. Can you take your double hexagon, which will represent your whole, one whole, okay? I want you to use a pattern block, pick a pattern block that will represent half, one half, and be able to take a second and think about why you chose this block and why it represents one half. Okay. All right, Iman? Because this side takes the same amount of space, so, um, when we covered it with a hexagon, if we were to shade it, pretend to shade it, it would equal one half because this side has n nothing on it and this side is covering up this um, side of the double. Okay, can anyone add to that? Antonio? Um, what she was basically saying is that um, since you've already put this here, it looks like if you if you were to put another one, then it would be a hole. So then if you were to take it away, since it fits right here, then this would equal one half. Okay. Of the the decagon. Okay. Thank you. Can you, on your model, we're going to draw a picture of exactly what you did with your manipulative. So we have our double hexagon. We're going to shade in half of our double hexagon. So can you do that now? shade in half, and I'll do that with you. And your picture should look like your model, okay? If it doesn't, something is different. Okay. All right, now I want you to take time and think for a second, how can we represent one half using symbols? Using symbols. How can we represent one half using symbols? Richard. We can use numbers. We can use numbers. And how would we write one half as a number? Um, one as your numerator and two as your denominator. Okay. And can you tell me what you know about those numbers? One as a numerator and two as a denominator? Well, um, one is the number that, uh, I mean, numerator is the one that goes at the top and denominator is the one that goes on the bottom. Thank you. Can anyone add to that? Expand on that? The one and the two, the numerator and the denominator. Can you? What does the one represent and what does the two represent? The two, the one represents the numerator, how many pieces, I mean, how, how many is shaded. Okay. And two represents the denominator and how many pieces are. Thank you. Okay. So we can represent fractions or the shaded part of a half using numbers. Is there another symbol we can use to represent one half? Imani. We can draw a picture, okay. a sort of tangle, and we split it in the middle, so it's equal in the shape one, so you know that it's one half. Okay. Just blank. Okay, thank you. Um, one thing Imani said that was very important, she said the pieces have to be equal. Okay, in fractions, we always remember the pieces are equal. Okay, what else? So we draw a picture. We can use numbers. How else can we represent one half using a symbol? Antonio. Uh, you can do it with letters. Like you can, um, like you can use um, for one, you all any, and then for half, for two, you can put the but two is what we're referring for half in the fraction. So one half. Okay, one half using words. Superb. Is there another way that we can represent one half? Pictures. Numbers, words. Okay. Is there any other way, Richard? Um, we can use um, the shapes. The shapes. Okay. Use manipulatives. Okay. To represent one half, just like we did here. Fantastic. Thank you. Okay. So you guys said that this represents one half. So let's use the symbol numbers to write one half, or to shade in half and then make sure that we know it's half by writing half. So this is one half, and we know that this is one half, and one half plus one half equals one whole. Okay, you guys have said that, or two halves, thank you. What I want you to do is go to the next decagon, 
And what we're going to do first, we're going to use our manipulatives. I want you to choose the pattern block, block, choose the pattern block that will show or can show or divides this double hexagon into fourths. Choose the pattern block that will show fourths on the decagon. And be ready to share why you chose that pattern block. If you add three more trapezoids, it takes the same amount of space as one hole. Okay, thank you. Now I want you guys, we said that we can use symbols to represent one half. What symbols can we use to represent one four? Antonio? Uh, we could use uh, a picture so we can tie this into fourths and then shade in one fourth and then you can also label it as one fourth right there two fourths three fourths and four fourths for one whole okay thank you what i want you guys to do now is to label your double decagon partition it into fourths and label your fourths one fourth one fourth, one fourth, and one fourth, just like Kenisa and Richard said, which equal one whole, and shade in one of those fourths. Thank you, Mommy. Shade in one fourth. Okay, now, what I want you to do is look at both models. Look at the one half model and look at the one fourth model, okay? Looking at both models, can you see where the same amount of space can be covered, okay? Where can the same amount of space be covered? Okay, look at the one half and the amount of space we covered there. Look at the one fourth and the amount of space, one fourth model and the amount of space we covered there. Where can the same amount of space be covered? Uh, Imani. Um, if you covered this and shade in this, it would equal the same amount as one half. Um, because we only partitioned it into fourths, so we would still be able to shade it in, and that would be two fourths. Okay, can you show me using your manipulative? Yes. Okay, can you show me one half using your manipulative? One half. Okay, one half. And now show me where you see the same amount of space can be sh shaded in. You said this is one half. Does this picture match this manipulative? Yes. Okay, now can you show me the same amount of space mm -hmm. using fourths? Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. if we just get two chapter layers and cover the hexagon. Okay, and you said this, the yellow hexagon represents one half, and these trapezoids represent what fraction now? One fourth, two fourths. Two fourths, why two fourths? Because at first we started off with one fourth because, um, because none were shaded, so we shaded it in one to make it one fourth. And now we added two fourths because that would equal the same amount of one half, and they will have the same space. Okay, great. So it's it's easy to see that the fractions, let me take this off, one half is equal to two fourths. They are equivalent fractions. And they are equivalent fractions because one half takes up the same amount of space as two fourths, okay? All right, now I want you to shade in one more fourth to make an equivalent fraction to one half. Now you should have two fourths.